You're listening to The Deranged Nation, a true crime podcast featuring New York Times bestselling paranormal romance author and your host, Teresa Gableman. Good evening, everyone. What's up? Welcome back. Damn it, I was going to say welcome. <laughs> now you got to think of something else to say. What's up? <laughs> Here we are with Derange Nation, episode 17, Cellmate's Nightmare. What'd you guys think about this case? This thing's whacked the fuck out. Yeah, for about sure. Like Pazuzu. <clears throat> I, he might be worse than Pazuzu. I, I think, think he is kind of worse than Pazuzu. I don't know. I think When it comes to his mindset about killing. Yeah. So who we're talking about is Jamie Asuna and... When you go to look at his picture, because all you got to do is is type in Jamie Asuna and he pops right up there. Yeah, and he's still alive too, so yeah. we got to be careful. He, yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. That's that's the thing about doing this stuff on crazy. People. I don't freak out when they're dead already. Well, see, I haven't got to watch much, so this is going to be more of a a reaction out of me than right than a fact spitting. Yeah. Yeah, but you've seen his picture. I did see the picture. He he would probably make a popular TikTok. Well, <laughs> probably. <laughs> so, and before this started, I was saying, you know, the the child that Jamie Asuna was, I really feel for that child because this guy went through some major, major trauma. I no, it, I'm not giving him no excuse or whatever but it seems like it always begins at the childhood yeah it, it does and absolutely and some of the things that this guy had and i, I kind of want to start with that everything that i read you know or listened to it started out with like his you know what he has done right and i think it's important to start out with you know when he was a child his dad was very very abusive um he, you know, he beat, beat him and everything. Uh, his mom finally, and I don't know, you know, his, his mom had different kids from three different dads, which, you know, it's whatever. But so she divorces him, goes with us, to, you know, with another guy, uh, which would be Jamie's stepdad. Um, he was even worse than his real dad. Mm -hmm. At five years old, he he had kids of his own. At five years old, uh, Jamie would have to sit there and watch his step siblings eat um, while he had nothing. That's sad. Um, and as I was listening to this and reading about it, I really wanted to punch his mom right in the face because I'm sorry. That's just why but she had other kids she of her own that she had to worry about too. But still, I don't care. You know, treat my kid like that, you're out of here. Yeah, no way. But well, fuck, man, you guys are starting this off, and I probably feel like the viewers and list not viewers, listeners, because I'm kind of like, damn, like I'd be a little pissed too. But I do know what he does, and it's like, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, and this doesn't excuse what he turned out to be because you know, but stuff like that will cause mental issues. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like somebody give that motherfucker a hug. (laughs) (laughs) Shit. Well, and that's not. I'd rather not. So make mine cry. Okay, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. I think he was kicked in the head when he was really young too, and had like a an injury from it. A bad injury. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of them was. Uh, yeah. His his real dad kicked his mom. In the stomach when she was pregnant. That's what it was. Yeah. Um, so, and then he, of course, was beaten at, at uh, that was at five. At, and when he could eat, he would have to eat like a dog. Yeah. The, the dad would put what? the food. The yeah. The dad would put the food on the floor, and he would have to eat like a dog. Yeah. So, But he would sit at the table and watch his siblings. It always starts it with the parents, him. dude. It, it really does. It, oh, absolutely. 100%. 100 percent um at seven years old another thing that really bothered me um he tied him up and beat him as he was tied up and i i'm pretty sure 
uh, that's when the mom kind of said, you know, whatever, you know, I'm, I'm kind of done here. Yeah. But she tried to leave. She went back. He threw a fork. The stepdad threw a fork, hit his Jamie's brother, who I believe was uh, two years older. Oh, no. I think he was two years older. Um, so that's when the mom was like, okay, you're going with your, you know, your grandfather. Mm-hmm. Jamie wanted to go with his brother to get out of that situation. But the grandfather, which is um, his real father's father, Mm -hmm. okay, on that side of the family, couldn't stand Jamie. And nobody knew why. So he was left there alone with the stepfather. And why do you think he was so into torture? He was clearly tortured us at a young age. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, To be tied up? Yeah, one of the things that his... um, his mom had said that, you know, he, they had a cat and he would, she would find the cat in the freezer in the oven. So he did, you know, torture animals and, yeah. and everything like that. But I heard interviews from other family members that said Jamie, you know, was, was really a loving child. Um, he just was crying out for help. Yeah. But like I said, it don't excuse what he's done. Um, but like you said, I think it all starts. He was hungry. You know, well, I know, man. Was... <laughs> and cats with a little barbecue <laughs> sauce on them. That's oh too my god! All right, too far, too far. That's, That's why I don't have too far. far. Okay, we'll get I just shut made down one liner. Bink wouldn't appreciate yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. We're... I never said I ate one. I just said they taste good with barbecue sauce. No, they... that sounds like you ate one. <laughs> you heard. Don't make me say cut. <laughs> <laughs> So, anyway. I think he put it in the microwave, too. Yeah, he did. Put it in the microwave, um, the oven, and just different. He's probably all the same cat? Or or did he just keep killing cats? He didn't turn it on or anything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the the mom would catch it or whatever, so. He was clearly suffering. And it sounds like we have a tortured dog upstairs (laughs) whining right now, but the dog's fine. Oh, oh Lord! Goodness. It's because every time we, every get, time we get excited. Yeah. yeah, he's like, "Why am I not involved?" I yeah. Know. So anyway, that's that's in the end. Those mics would be everywhere. <laughs> We'd be getting unplugged. Yeah, if we had let them down here, it'd be would down be here for hours. Pandemonium. So fast forward to uh, when Jamie turned twenty, he met uh, a lady that was quite older than him. She was thirty-seven at the time. Ju- Julia, is that how you say her name? I think so. Say that again, Julia. I think so. Yeah. Um, but anyway, his ex, his ex-wife. But she met Jamie. Um, she met Jamie when she was having a birthday party for her 16-year-old. Um, he actually came to the house for the party with her nephew, mm-hmm. and that's how they met. So there's like what 17. Was this his first wife? This. He was married this- more than once. This is his only wife, I believe. Oh, okay. Yes, his okay. only I'm wife. I'm just asking, yeah. too. Oh, I thought I missed something. No. Because, honestly, this, except for a podcast that I listen to, if you search this, there's a lot of, di- I mean, all that comes up is the cellmate stuff. Yeah. You know, which it, we'll get into. It's overwhelming. Yeah, but anyway, anyway, I, I kind of learned some of this from the, from the podcast. But, um, so, you know... She she was there at the party. She was kind of drinking with the kids and kind of letting loose and everything like that. And her nephew got upset about her dancing with one of the guys. Mm-hmm. So Jamie went and got a knife from the butcher block and took the guy outside and stabbed him. Oh, lovely. Let's get married after you just stabbed yeah. this well, guy. Well, that's just it. And she was... I would never dream. She worked for the, uh, for the jail system, for the... Uh, yeah, jail system, whatever. I can't think of the proper Corrections. Name. Corrections, yeah. Department. Yeah. Um, so he goes to jail for that, and <laughs> as they're in jail, he's writing her, she's writing him. Mm-hmm. They're kind of, and you know, during this interview that she's doing, she's kind of like, oh, well, you know, I was, I was kind of not taking it serious, but it was nice. You know, he... 
he was mature and yeah he just went out and stabbed somebody whatever right um jesus you know and he was you know i guess she was 37 he was 20 younger guy so anyway after he gets out they meet one night at a hotel what nothing do the nasty she ends up pregnant yeah okay so they they end up getting married and that's when shit starts she really finds out who this jamie right jamie guy is that's um, why they say he has multiple faces because so many people saw him as a good guy a bad guy a crazy guy well the, and the lady interviewing her said oh and he kept getting crazy tattoos on his face yeah when the, that's one thing that was asked during the interview you know when you met him did he have the tattoos and she said no yeah but when he came out of jail he had the two tattoos of i guess they're like horns above his eyes uh-huh and then like the joker tattoo on uh-huh. his mouth on both sides of his mouth he that's because i know he had one of above his eyebrow for a while and just one of the joker things on this side for a while from the pictures that I yeah, saw, the yeah, picture of him only, only yeah, a, and then probably after he went back, the yeah, and I guess I was a jailhouse tat that he got. Sure, I don't <laughs> had, had to go back and get it finished. Yeah, he had to go back and <laughs> get it done. Um, so that was one of the things that you know the interviewer asked about him. To was you know. I think what she was trying to say nicely is, "What in the hell did you even see in this guy?" Yeah, you know. But anyway, she ended up getting pregnant. I mean, the day you meet him, he stabbed somebody, dude. Right. What? Um, they marry. Started, you know, of course, things started going downhill. During one of the fights, and this I found pretty, I don't know, pretty messed up. He stole her mother's ashes. Took the ashes. She never got them back. He has no idea, you know, what happened with them um That's... he he began abusing her started abusing uh her seven other her seven-year-old son from another father and following in his stepdad's footsteps yeah pretty much literally if you yeah and that's why i thought that was kind mental of torture with taking his her mother's did you say her mother's right her mother's ashes or her dad's ashes her mother's yeah that's yeah. torturing mentally yeah. So there was a lot of that going on back and forth, you know, and there's, I'm sure, a hell of a lot more. But once he started doing that to her seven-year-old son, she actually, and this this shows you what kind of asshole, kind of, not really, well, he was an asshole, <laughs> but kind of a, a puss he really was. Um, she pulled a knife out on him, and he called his grandmother to come and pick him up. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I found that kind of fucking funny. <laughs> I'd get him. <laughs> yeah. We had this talk earlier. Dad asked if he thinks I could take him. I said, yeah. Yeah. If he didn't have a shank. He was only... If he didn't have a six-inch <laughs> shank. He was only like... Five, a hun- six, 130 pounds. Yeah, about 100 and... Yeah, yeah, you give him no weapons. That's probably why he went after women and then somebody asleep. Him up. <laughs> <laughs> Little bitch. <laughs> so she ended up getting a restraining order on him but we all know restraining orders yes yeah, she should get one but always have some other type of uh protection because a lot of times um you know they're just it's just a piece of paper yeah pretty much um so um, he started threatening her and the kids. He would call, and he actually called, and this is what he said. He said, watch the news, bitch. I killed a woman. And there there goes our, our dogs again. Um, so uh, he, you know, he was threatening them. I think he was showing up. She would find footsteps in the snow around the house. Oh, no. You know, different things. <laughs> oh no. No 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 no. Like on TikTok. Yeah. Oh no. Oh no 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 no. <laughs> yeah, we're addicted. You guys TikTok. and your TikTok. <laughs> it's funny as hell. Some of that shit is funny. Don't get you, me started. Okay, sorry. So anyway, <laughs> um he actually called her and said, 
Watch the news, bitch. I killed a woman. Um, she actually called 911, and she was saying that she found, you know, there was some, and she figured it was him that was coming around her house, found footsteps in the snow, blah, blah, blah. But she said, ask them, the 911 operator, and I heard the call, and she's like, um, has anybody reported a stabbing or, or anyone, you know, hurt or killed at the El Morocco Hotel? Yeah. And the 911 operator sounded kind of confused and like, no, no, we haven't had any reports that I know of, but, you know, we'll check into it. The sheriff's department never sent anyone out to question her about that. To and she's got to ask her why she asked. Yeah, and she's right. got to restrain and, and because she said that Jamie, um, you know, it gave them his information. Said he said he killed someone there. Yeah, and uh, so they never sent anybody out. Um, they finally picked Jamie up. Uh, he blamed everybody. You know, but himself. Um, well, maintenance guy. Well, yeah, the maintenance guy. Sorry about that. The maintenance guy, five days later. Right. That's sad. Five days body. later, they uh, the maintenance guy goes into the room and finds her in there. And she had six kids. I wonder where her kids were at yeah. that time. Did, anybody, did they say anything no. about that? And I didn't know she lived in the motel because she supposedly she lived in this motel. Yeah. I don't even know how they got together. I have no idea on how they got together. I know it was a bad prostitution area. Yeah. And uh, he did say that he chose her in an interview mm -hmm. because of the area that she was in. He knew that yeah. with her screaming and everything that the cops wouldn't get called because stuff yeah. like that went on there all the time. Yeah, he's, he said that. I heard him say that. Yeah. Um, so they end up picking him up, I guess, because they're like, oh, well, by the way, his ex called and said. Right. <laughs> you know, all the shit. So they pick him up. Of course, he blamed his ex about everything. It's like, oh, no, she's just out to get me. You know, blah, blah, blah. She does this and that. And, and the cops kind of took his side. Mm -hmm. And, um told him said well you know it sounds like you really need to get far away from her as possible right. you know shit like that which pisses me off um one of the cops said actually said to him that this lady that he that was murdered actually looked like his wife so kind of put to because it right one of the things that jamie was saying is like well, if I was going to kill anybody and, you know, I'm such a bad person and my wife is so afraid of me, why wouldn't I just went and killed her? Why didn't I kill somebody else? She looked enough like her that it felt like her, maybe? And then the cop answered that question, at, you know, at the end of the interview. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, there you go, old detective. <laughs> you know? And they let him go. Um, but finally they did get him, um, and he went to jail what was his sentence on that? He had uh, life in prison with the possibility of parole, I believe. Mm -hmm, I think so. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. I don't remember what it's Because he wasn't on death row yet. Was. But I know that he wasn't going to get out either. Yeah. Um, no, I think yeah, he did. Because he, I think time, because of I all of his priors, too. But I think he did have a possibility of parole. No, that that was the guy in the cell. I think. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Was, he yeah, had a possible. He was a yeah. his parole date was coming up. Okay, so we'll get yeah we'll get to that in a second. So anyway, he goes to jail, but from jail he's still, you know, screwing around trying to make his ex's life miserable. Right. Um, and as he's getting sentenced, he pretty much mocks the family, of, you know. Of who, you know, the Pena family mm -hmm. uh, by waving to him. And Putting his thumb up and, and smiling. Laughing. Yeah, he definitely didn't have any remorse. When the judge said, <laughs> you know, you got life in prison, he gave the judge a thumbs up. I mean, he's just a total arrogant jerk. And, like, made sure to look back and smile and everything mm -hmm. at the family. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, 
It's just, but as he was in jail during this time, he was sending bloody rat letters from jail. I thought they checked that shit to his ex. They check the ones that come in. You seal them when you send them out. Yeah. Really? So that's how they got it. And then uh, to his ex and to the prosecutors. Um, He also called child services on his ex. Mm Mm-hmm. And she actually got taken to jail for that. So as um, his ex-wife is in jail waiting for her court date for the child services, uh, she her court date comes. She's in the van going to the courthouse from the jail, and she hears laughter. I don't know. I've never been on one of these vans or buses mm-hmm. or whatever. But she says that she turned around, and in one of the cages, there was Jamie. So I don't know if he had to be there because he was the one that called. Uh huh. I don't know how any of that works or how. Was he? He was in jail at the time too, right? He was in jail. They do ride female and male people to jailhouses together. So that makes sense. Um, but they're, they're supposed to sit all the way back and all the way in the front. They're not supposed to be a seat together. Well, that's what he said. That's what she said. Yeah. He was in the back. I guess there's, I, he, she said cages, but I guess it was they like a, a separator. Yeah. A separator. Yeah. Um, so that, and that's what I figured when I, when I heard her. You that's know, interesting that they that. would put them in the same one though. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess the reason why he was going is because he is the one that called. Right. So I guess he had to be. I mean, they really didn't get into that, but anyway, I think that I thought that was pretty. Then again, it's jail. You're in jail, right? right? They don't give a shit. Um, but and then he tells the the other girl. He says, um, "Do it, and you'll get the drugs." And the girl starts beating the shit out of his ex. Wow. On the bus. Um. So anyway, and also they found out that he did have a hit out on her while she was in jail. Wow. Which she she finally got out. The charges were dropped. But she lost her seven-year-old um, to her, you know, other ex. Uh-huh. So that, that's about all that I heard anymore on his, on his ex. But she played a big part of him going, you know, right. going to jail for that. So I, I'm going to kind of let you guys, too, on the cell, <laughs> his cellmate. Supposedly, everybody knew how unstable he was a Satanist. He said that he would kill again. Um, he didn't care who it was, mother, brother, sister. He enjoyed it. If, the, if it fit his He said it mood, was better than sex. It was better yeah. than drugs or sex. And if it fit his mood, he was going to kill him. And... You know, I think the big thing about that was they ended up giving him a cellmate. (laughs) And a lot of people were like, why would you do that when this guy said he was going to kill? Yeah. You know? Um, I mean, especially if you haven't had one the whole time you've been locked up because of the stuff that you do. mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I think they had just put him in there. Is that correct? Yeah, he wasn't even in there 48 hours, I don't think. Yeah. From but the but the CEO the CEO that took took the guy back there said something to one of the guys who was interviewing on the phone. Somebody that always worked shower duty, which was right next to Osuna's cell, so they talked all the time. Mm-hmm. He said that when he was on the phone with his wife, or his soon to be wife at the time, one of the CEOs walked up to him and said let let your friend Osuna know that we've got a cellmate for him and don't be a punk. That's what he said that the CEO said to him. And the wife attested to that too. The whose wife? This the guy who was on the phone that what the was CEO his name? spoke Billy, to. Wasn't it? I think what was so. His name Billy. Billy. So who were taught the cellmate's name was Louis Romero. He was 44 years old. He was actually he was in prison i believe for second degree murder and he was actually up he was coming up for parole yeah yeah he yeah. He, he was eligible for parole um and from what i understand i mean i i think he was a model 
I don't think they had any problems with this guy in jail. No. Or anything. A model just, jailbird. <laughs> yeah, model jailbird. The snitch of the jail, maybe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, and I guess he just got the the wrong card. <laughs> and got. Or he was set up. Some people thought he was set up. Yeah. They thought that he was, you know. The CEOs hated Asuna so much Sick. because of he would throw feces at him and his own piss yeah. and blood. blood. And he would always try, like, he would try to whoop their asses and everything. Yeah. So he, I he think would, they hated him enough that they tried to set it up to where he wasn't going to be yeah, in that unit anymore. I think they were trying to get him out of that prison. Personally. Yeah, that's what My opinion. Think. Poor Lewis, man. <laughs> that kind of yeah. sucks. She's like, hey, bud, how's it going? Yeah. My yeah. new cell. What are you in here for? <laughs> so. <laughs> that's scary, man. I guess the, they did a round and found um, Lewis. Uh, what he was sitting up in a f- weird position. He was posed in a position. He was, he was posed. They didn't say where his head was or anything, did yeah. they? I don't. No, they did. But I, I would think. assume if he's sitting up, would it be like? Because they said it was so demonic and movie like. Wouldn't you think that it was like in his hands or something? Well, you probably know what I mean? sitting there holding well, his first, yeah. head. Probably. So, they didn't really talk about. No, that No, it's like much, they didn't want to. I'd but probably, she said it was movie like, well, and that's what I would picture. I'd probably fucking quit yeah. first if thing. I was a CEO or something. Then I walked in, I'd be like. I'm going to call it a day. <laughs> I'm going to go on home now. Oh, the they FBI. said the guards were like tore up Well, about let, it, let's man. explain. I think I'm going to go home for, now. Okay, so he cut off, um, and it was with a sharp metal object wrapped in a string with a handle, attached to a handle. So They say it was just all, a single razor blade connected yeah. to it, too, which and, is insane. Yeah, so this is what he did with that. Um, he... He and you gotta imagine that would have taken a while. Yeah. Especially if by that's law that you're supposed to said, make rounds every Billy fifteen said, to thirty minutes. Billy said that, that how could he do something like that in that short of time? But yeah, so he without cut off a maybe finger, they wasn't really checking every thirty minutes though no either. There's no way no. because he you cut know? off a finger, part of his probably lung. like you check as soon as yeah yeah twenty minutes ago. There's blood on his window, but that's <laughs> normal. So he cut off a finger, part of his lung, and then I heard on what you guys were listening to, a rib did something with a rib. He cut into his rib to get to a piece of his lung. He cut out several pieces of his lung. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Cut out one of his eyes, and then um, he decapitated him. He cut his head off. Cut his His head, head yeah. Completely off. (laughs) Decapitated. Yeah. Yeah. He cut his ears off, too. With a razor blade. That just blows me away. Um,. That's not even half of it. And then posed it. Poses it. And this was at the California State Prison. And he made a necklace out of the body parts. And made a And necklace. was wearing it when they walked in. And there was stuff written all over the walls in his blood, but it was very neatly written, they said. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I can't remember what exactly was written, but I know that they said it was weird how neatly written it was in blood. So, you know. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you still whoop that ass, you think? Yeah. <laughs> like you said, he probably got him when he was sleeping or yeah, something. Dude, oh, yeah, he probably yeah. bitched him. He yeah. probably, it was probably a bitch move. Yeah. Because they said there was no <clears throat> screaming. How would you not the hear it detail. unless somebody was either already knocked the hell out? Because he could have knocked him out first and then did it to keep it from being loud. They don't want to release but that. But I still, but. I'm, you know, when I went to school for hair... I had to learn, like, all the stuff and, you know, the bones and the everything and the head neck, area head and neck area. A razor blade. That would have taken a Their while. tendons and muscles and... Yeah, it, but, no, man, a razor blade coming from construction can cut through fucking shingles. Yeah, dude, yeah. my dad... It can dad, cut through a lot. So if you fabricated it with a, with a fucking yeah. handle... You could, sit there and you could do some damage with well, one sharp razor my dad, blade. Now, where uh, he got a fresh had, razor blade that Well, beats you get me. them. They give them to you to shave and stuff, but you're supposed to turn them back in and give your ID back because your ID you use to get like hygiene and stuff that you have to turn back in mm-hmm. and razors and stuff that There's, they don't they want they you make, to keep. Dude, they sharpen things. They make yeah. all kinds of shanks and knives and freaking shit. But no, there. what I was saying, my dad, he had one of them razor cell, knives. You can definitely sharpen something up with concrete. Yeah. 
the stone. If it if it wasn't already so sharp, yeah. But my the dad, metal. he did construction, and he had his arm up with one of those, what do they call it, that hold the razor blades? Like a, a knife? utility knife? Yes, one of those, dude, and he dropped it, and it cut him open to his bone all the way down his arm from dropping it. Oh, yeah. With no force. Think about that. Yeah. yeah. So with force, can you imagine? You know when what you're I mean? trying to cut yeah. something. Yeah. Oh, I know. Split so him to his bone. You think that it would dull after a Because they, <coughs> you know... I don't know. Well, I don't think he'd cut through the bone. He probably was he able probably to break snapped that. His head off. Just snapped his neck That's off. So Just keep up. twisting it like a screw. Yeah. That's evil shit. That somebody that can do that. They I'm said, only ca- I'm only saying this from had... a mechanical construction <laughs> standpoint because I do this kind of shit all day. You know what I mean? Like you just. You can cut some shit with a knife. Can't they you? said the yeah. satanic yeah. star was often yeah, like. If you're trying to break something off, you just keep twisting it till it cells. snaps. He said, he, he, yeah. he, he, <laughs> he said that he was satanic. Yeah. yeah. He, well, he would paint the pentagrams in blood on his floor. That's, That's what I so just said. Fucked. Did you say that? I was listening so to fucked. Cody. I know. <laughs> Me and Cody were in our own conversation. Yeah. About utility knives. Lord. What's that? But I, I definitely. <laughs> we'll never forget when that happened to him because it was it was gruesome. Yeah, and it was like no force. You know what I mean? Imagine the force. Yeah. Because it was bad. Well, they said he was smiling when they came in. I think it cut a tendon too, and like he he had his arm all wrapped up in a cast and everything over it. Yeah. I didn't see any pictures of the scene. I look. Oh, well, I, I went. I to seen Duck, one because I figured they might not. I, it said on different things that it was a crime scene, but there was no pictures. Well, so. they said, too, that he requested the photos. He wanted the photos of it. Like but they say that they say that, yeah, they say that a lot of guys do that yeah, in prison anyway. I saw that. Because they want to be able to tell, like. I'm a badass. kind of like, yeah, I'm not lying here. Look at the pictures. I'll cut your fucking head off. Yeah. And do they actually give them the pictures? Some of them they can They do get. They I do mean, it's their case. You're legally case, allowed to have paperwork. absolutely every piece They're of paper. They're allowed to have all the evidence. It's fucking so crazy. they use them as like you know trophies. That's what the pictures were for. But I think he was probably just. I mean, because he said he, he didn't care. He wanted to look at it from his own pleasure. I think, and we were talking that we think he wanted to get out of there anyway. He yep. wanted to get on death row because. He asked you know, the guy yeah, who was you're on going, shower duty. You're on death duty. row, but I, th- I believe a lot of death row inmates got it a lot better well, than, yeah. than mm-hmm. regular prison inmates. Well, and the one thing you know, that you say that. I've seen them get TVs and books, and they get everything that usually I think they, better food, too. I think you like yeah. when the time comes, that, that And I that think is. he didn't get the death penalty, did he? What did they find? What they sentence him after that murder? After he killed Romero, what kind of sentencing did he get? Um... He obviously got life without parole, but yeah, right, yeah. I don't think he got the death penalty. I think no, they because pushed I don't for it. Think, I don't think the death penalty was. Does it was California, California have a death penalty? I don't think so. I'll double check that here in a minute. I don't but think they do. Now that you bring that up, when he the, for the, his first murder, the lady that um, that interviewed him, you know, she was a new. She was a. She had never interviewed really anybody mm-hmm. you know, she was fresh and and well, what was the podcast you should probably thousand give faces, credit for that thousand faces you're podcast using it, information. yeah and it was it was a, and i i need to listen a little bit more um to the very end of it i kind of ran out of time but it was a very well done podcast yeah. several episodes of this about him yeah. yeah i think there were six total mm-hmm. but um one thing because she thought Supposedly, they had a little bit of evidence that pretty much proved that he had done it. Right. And she was kind of going to throw that at him. But he pretty much, when she walked into the room, he says, well, I guess you know I did it. Right. (laughs) And she was like, okay, that just screwed me up because now I don't know what to do. Right. Because he pretty much admitted, and he hadn't admitted that he had done this. He had said he, he didn't. Right. To that point. So when it goes to court, um the defense started objecting to it to her because they knew that she had this interview Mm -hmm. where he pretty much said, yeah, I'm the one I did it. And the defense was trying to get him off. Well, supposedly he told this, this lady, Hey, I don't, I'm done. I, I put the family through this anymore. I did it. I'm finished. 
So she asked him, she's like, well, you do care about the family. He's like, no, not really. He yeah. says, I just want to get out of this prison. I guess because he gets transferred somewhere else. That or, was the whole and, point. Yeah, he that told was, that Billy guy that he, yeah. when he told him, because he was in the death row unit, that it was better. He was like, I want to go there. Yeah, because he told this lady, he says, no, I'll do it again. I'm sadistic. I don't care what I did. Yeah. yeah. They, they, none of them mean anything to me. He says, but why are they having to get dressed and come in here for something that I did? I did it. Yeah. But his defense team didn't want to lose the case. Right. And they were they were trying to get him off. Get him off. And he was like, I don't want to get off. Yeah. It's like whatever. At that point, because I like I said, I guess he knew it was over anyways. And she asked him if he had killed more people before that, too. And yeah, he said he did. And he said he did. But he wouldn't go into detail about that because he said that he had help. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was somebody that was showing him the ropes, and he cut the inter- that part of the interview off. He's like, mm, no, not saying any more about yeah. that. So yeah, he definitely enjoyed killing, and I think he af- even after he did the decapitation and everything, he's once again I think he stabbed somebody else in prison after that. I think yeah, I'm sure. I think I there mean, was another story where he had stabbed. Somebody yeah, I else I remember in hearing something about that too. So. You know, it was the the family um, of Lewis, his sister. I mean, I, I really felt for them because they're trying to find answers of why he was put in he there. He got a cellmate and why they put their, you know, their her brother in there. Um, and she got up to do this, the M, uh, impact statement. Uh-huh. And she says, I just hope that, you know, he will one day have remorse and you can see him sitting there shaking his head, nope. And he was saying, nope. That's to, sick. Right to her. You know, and it's just like, damn, man. I just. This dude's whacked. He just, there, you know, there, that is evil. And I just don't understand that type of evil. Thank goodness. Yeah. You know, but. It's always interesting to hear about, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's really scary. But yeah, I'm kind of interested now. Now I'm wanting to know where her, this. Pena's kids were. If yeah. she lived in the hotel, which I didn't know. They might have been with her right other dads, too. Yeah. At the time, but they didn't say anything about the kids after that. I think they were age six to. T- there was six of them. She yeah, had on. six I've kids. That's bugging me now. Six. Sick fuck. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's. So, ex- would you rate him worse than Pazuzu, or? I would say. How would you rate him on the? Yeah, I'd say worse. I mean, because if, Pazuzu because more if he was, was out in the world, killings, and he tried to hide his. He just got caught. He got Whereas away with a lot, though. Jamie, he committed suicide, didn't he? They said he did. Yeah, they in said prison. he did. Pazuzu is dead. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I I couldn't remember. I, I'm pretty. Sure yeah, he I can't is. Remember yesterday. <laughs> Yeah. But another thing, dude, they sealed ago, they sealed one. the files yeah. on his case. So you can't really see what's going on with the correction officers and they wouldn't release any of the times where they were supposed to be walking yeah. to do welfare checks on him. Yeah. They wouldn't release any of that. So why? I think it goes a little bit deeper than what they want to show us. Yeah. I think, I think everything goes I a little think, deeper than they want to show us. Let's not get into that now. I think, though, like what we were talking about earlier was like, I think he wanted to get out and they wanted him to get out. Yeah. So, you know, and he told that dude on the phone, like, hey, tell Azuna we got one for him. You know, not to be a chump. Don't be a chump, he said. That's crazy. Pretty much telling him to go ahead and off this dude. Yeah. Like, here's and a that play other thing. dude's wife that he was on the phone with, she heard him yeah, say it, too. that's what I'm saying. She heard him say it on the phone. So, so I think it goes deep. Well, and they just don't want to tell you because why would they? Yeah, why would they? They don't like to tell you stuff. So her, her kids were ages... You don't need to look at these records. Her kids were ages 6 to 25. She's trying to get Which means started. her first kid was when she was 12 years old. If she was 37. Damn. Must have been a hard life. Yeah. To be a child having a child. Yeah. So, but she was, I don't think we they said They did this. say she was down on her luck, so she might have not have been there forever. You know what yeah. I mean? 
Something might have happened to cause her to start but standing. Anyway, we never even said how she was killed. Um, there goes the dogs again. She was gagged and found with knives and scissors in her back. Yeah. Didn't his stepdad stab somebody with scissors? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Repetitive there behavior. Was, and there's more to that if you listen to uh, the Thousand Faces podcast. There's She goes into detail about... Jamie's real father, stepfather, um, their, what they went through with their fathers, mm-hmm. and I mean, it's, it, you can the just line. see the history, the history, and the replay of what their childhood was to what they were doing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's pretty, pretty crazy, but, yeah. Um, so let it, you know... Don't go to jail because uh, they're not going to give a shit. They'll put you in a cell with uh, somebody that may. Like I said, he's still alive. I know. He might not be. He might be in the news again at some point. Maybe. They might let him out. <laughs> God, I hate mine. It's I California. That. Don't listen to it. Me. Is yeah. Hopefully, yeah. He, hopefully yeah. he ain't got COVID. Yeah, yeah, shit. <laughs> He'll get let out. <laughs> oh, fuck. Cut. <laughs> 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 Kill it. Start over. So he didn't say that word, did he? So yeah, that was uh, Jamie Asuna and his victims. Fucking whack job. Dead and alive. I think his ex-wife is. Sorry to better. the families for sure. Absolutely. I just I couldn't imagine, you know. You could, yeah. Wait, so what did she go to jail for? I just, CPS. She, yeah. See, Child he, Protective Services. From jail, he called CP, you know, Child Services on his ex. And because they had a kid together. So, and his, you know, unfortunately, he actually also left a letter. Did you guys hear the letter? No. No. That he wrote to his son. I don't think so. You didn't no. hear that? Yeah, that's on the podcast also. Is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which, I don't know. You got to feel for the kids, you know. Mm-hmm. And hopefully the his legacy will stop. And hopefully, I don't know. They some, can pave something new. Supposedly his mom, he watched his mom every ex or step father whatever father figure she, whatever all of them abused her you know so. and that's why he w- was I mean, abusing his wife probably yeah so that's about that's about it that's like i said there's you know i would suggest list if you want to know more in detail because there's some things we didn't cover you know listen to that podcast it's a really well done podcast and uh it's kind of jumpy when you look online Mm -hmm. and most of it goes back to the cellmate. But honestly, I believe that's not even the tip of the iceberg of the story. I think from his young childhood, his first marriage yeah, and all that. It's a lot. He's a wild looking character. Yeah. He's got a tat. What is the circle thing on his head? It's It's like a pen, satanic pentagram star. I believe what's it called? Pentagram. Pentagram. I don't think that's a pentagram. It's a. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's not a Jewish star. Sigils. It's a what? Sigil. What's a sigil? For a ritual. I don't know. Like a, I don't know. Just sigils are right. used in rituals. <laughs> no, ritual a sigil. Shit. They're they're signs, and that's, that's what, what yeah. they are. Okay. It's well, something. What Satanic saying. signs. It's all on supernatural. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's depressing. They canceled it's that. Good show. Or they didn't cancel <laughs> it. They ended it. I think they took the office off Netflix. They did. That's depressing. Everybody was really I'm upset, upset about, about that. that. <laughs> it's on HBO Max. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. They probably pay better. <laughs> yeah, probably. Anyway, on that note. All right. So I don't know what we're going to get into next. We'll su- we'll find. We'll find something deranged. Deranged. Just and don't crazy. let it be you. Just don't let it be you. And everybody stay safe in this crazy 
friggin' world we're living in right now, so... Like us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. You can follow us on Anchor, Buzzsprout, iTunes, and Spotify. We also post everything on YouTube. Like, subscribe, share. And we said nothing political, so we'll be back. (laughs) Deranged Nation, Nation. You've been listening to the Deranged Nation podcast. Join us every Wednesday night for a new episode as we bring you true crime, unsolved mysteries, and other deranged stories. This episode was sponsored by Braps MX and ATV Pro Shop. Visit them at brapsmx.pro. Also, visit our host, TeresaGableman.com, New York Times bestselling paranormal romance author of the Protector series, available on Amazon.com. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube.